Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today's discussion is, inshallah ta'ala, a continuation, a continuation of yesterday's lecture. But I'm going to make it such that if you haven't heard yesterday's talk, it'll still, inshallah ta'ala, make sense. What I want to talk about today is the end of oil. And I'll explain this from the Quran. The end of the oil and the companies that are, you can say, that the Quran calls ahluha that are, are in, in control of this oil, okay? And I want to say some new things today, inshallah ta'ala, that, you know, in, in, in further understanding this verse of the Qur'an, uh, ayah number 24 of Surah Yunus, as you will see, okay? Again, for those of you that have already seen it, seen it, kalla innaha tadkira. It's just a reminder, but uh, from yesterday, those of you saw it, but I will try to explain some things that are different that I didn't mention yesterday also, okay? So, let's get to it. First, before we set, understand how the end of the oil uh, will cause a basically a new phase, a stone age, you can say, a new phase to enter to the world. And, you know, I may not be exact on target, like it's not necessarily what I'm saying is a bullseye. And that's impossible by any human being to guess what Allah is planning to do. It is not possible, right? But something similar can be seen because of using the Quran and using the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, the sayings of our beloved Prophet ﷺ. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number uh, 24 of Surah uh, Yunus, okay, uh, and I talked about this yesterday, but I'm just reviewing it right now, and I'm going to talk about another aspect today too. Look, the example of this world, okay, and its history is Like, the first phase is, the water comes down from the sky Then, you know, there was thick vegetation From which the animals ate and the human beings ate Until this agricultural society, based societies, they remained in history until the industrial age started. Hatta until إِذَا win أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُحْرُفَهَا Now I talked about زُحْرُفَهَا in detail yesterday, right? So until the earth brings out its ornaments, its treasures, the oil, the, the petroleum, the copper, the, the iron, and the platinum, and everything comes out of the earth, the diamonds, and all of that. And what happens? وَزُيِّنَتْ And the earth becomes beautiful with all these things. And those people who are in charge of these resources, particularly oil. Why? Because the word dhahab, which is gold, that was coming out of the earth, right? Already before at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But zuhrufuha, zuhrufuha is, is that gold, which is a false gold, meaning the oil, okay? That plays the role of gold, but it's not really gold. Okay? وَزُحْرُفُهَا وَزَيِّنَتْ And it makes everything believe. Everything beautiful. It makes everything beautiful. وَذَنْ أَحْلُهَا And the people in charge of it. The people in control of it. Which? Who is in control of it? Who is in control of this oil? Aramco. Countries we call NOC. National Oil Companies. And there are five of these national oil companies that own majority of the resources of the world. And they're expanding their power and expanding their influence. And we will talk about this. And it is the fall of those companies, which includes Aramco, for which is the company, the oil company in Saudi Arabia, which is owned by the United States by 49% and by Saudi Arabia by 51%. The main oil company, Aramco, which wants to now they're thinking of going public and, you know, they're going to be like a multi-billion dollar company. But anyway, anyway, they think that we have complete control now. Then, this word Amr is very interesting. Okay. Amr is that, because it could have said, you know, uh, uh, and then, right? Uh, that Allah is saying that our command will come. Something will come. Something will happen. Something will happen that is 
that could be related to the issue of the oil or something outside the issue of the oil, but it seems that it is something outside the issue of the oil because of the word Amr. Ataha comes to it Amruna, our command. Comes to it who? Ataha. Ataha, the ha, the it comes to it. So it is referring to what? Comes to what? It could be the earth. It could be Ahluha, the people that are in control of it. Or it could be Zuhrufuha, and the people, the false gold. Something happens to it, right? So something comes as an external, spontaneous issue or event. Ataha Amruna. So our command will come. Layla no nahar. One part of the day of the earth will be day, the other will be the night. Our command will come. As if there was no yesterday, it'll become as if there was no yesterday. All this whole system, because the oil is connected to the dollar. So if oil falls, the dollar falls. And today, I'm going to, inshallah ta'ala, if I get a little bit of time, I'm going to remove a lot of misconceptions uh, that, uh, that need to be removed. Okay? So this is a very, very powerful ayah. Okay? Very powerful ayah. This should give you iman like at the level of ihsan because this is going to happen this whole system that is like the spider's web right is going to just fall down it's going to be a house of cards because as oil demand increases as oil demand increases population increases what there are a lot of misconceptions about the situation with oil so inshallah i'm going to talk a little bit about that first i want to talk about this book on oil it's called oil titans Okay, National Oil Companies in the Middle East, which are these companies, and one of those companies, Aramco, is owned by the United States, which is the Saudi, the one in Saudi Arabia, is shared with Saudi Arabia, the sharing of Aramco between Saudi Arabia and uh, and the Saudi government is, like I said, 49-51%, okay? So let's look at some of the takeaways from this book. Number one, National Oil Companies, Knox. In Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iran, Algeria, and Abu Dhabi. Yes, Iran also controls, okay? They control more than half of the world's oil and natural gas reserves. And here is a big secret of Iran, which I'm not going to talk about today, but one day I will talk about it. The inner workings of Knox are largely a mystery to outsiders. We don't know what numbers, we don't know how much, you know, how much reserves they have, how the price, like there's so much that they've been hiding recently, especially in the last 10 years. Knox operate in a historical context that includes the liberation of their sponsor countries from control by foreign interests. You know, they, they Knox came into control uh, uh, after the colonialism, okay? A few Knox allow women to play an important role, but of course this is going to change because the population of women, as the Prophet said, will increase. So they're going to be in these high positions and sponsoring countries often rely on Knox for help with economic and social issues such as employment. So like for example, Saudi Arabia has Aramco, okay? So they expect Aramco to help Saudi Arabia because these are not independent private companies. These are government companies. <clears throat> so when these fall, it means the government has fallen because these countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran and Abu Dhabi and Algeria, they rely completely on these companies to kind of like run the engine of their economy, okay? So sponsoring countries rely <coughs> on Knox for help with economic and social issues such as employment. Yet Knox must also adjust to the marketplace. So on the one side, they are helping their country because it's owned by the government, it's, it's not privately owned. But on the other hand, they have to run as a private company because they have to compete in the marketplace. Knox must balance government control with free market duties and opportunities. Except for Kuwait, most governments allow Knox to settle their own crude prices. Okay, so in Kuwait, the government sets the prices. In several countries, including Kuwait, Algeria, and Iran, Knox are seeking power, greater operational autonomy. So right now, they are at a phase where they're seeking their autonomy. Right? Hatta dhanna ahluha. They are still seeking more autonomy, more autonomy, more power, more power, okay? Knox are expanding beyond oil production to petrochemicals and marketing. So, for example, 
I forget which one of the oil companies was trying to buy off BP it was, okay? So they also want to, like, for example, own the gas stations. And a lot of these mergers are going to occur and happen. And, you know, they, the, the, this, this is going to save them costs and line everything up and give them more power. And they will, eventually, these oil companies will be in a position where they even kind of, like, control uh, the, the, the countries that they basically uh, are in, okay? Now, when this falls, these companies fall because these are the Ahluha. These are the people that are in control of it. When these fall, the whole country falls, right? Because they're interconnected. And when these fall, the dollar falls because they're interconnected too. The dollar can only be sold in what? In oil, right? By the OPEC organizations, okay? Now, let's look at uh, uh, something now that I, I, I was going to go into this today, but since I've already talked 10 minutes, I'm thinking maybe I should let go this part. I was going to talk about the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ regarding the treasure. Because uh, a lot of times uh, uh, the people feel, right, that, uh, like for example, the Prophet said, يُوشَكُ فُرَاتْ أَنْ يَخْسِفَ أَنْ كَنْزْ مِنَ الذَّهَبْ فَمَنْ حَذَرَهُ فَلَا يَأْخُذُ مِنْهَا Right? Gold, as you know, is halal. Halal, right? Gold is allowed in Sharia. But here the Prophet is saying that Euphrates will soon uncover a treasure of gold. Okay? But this translation, treasure of gold, is wrong. Because, and I've, I have a whole video on this, on, on Saudi Arabia and the petroleum and so on and so forth. But if you look for, and I'll just point this out right now, because I'm going to go into more details at another time. If it said, the uh, uh, Jabalu Dhahab, a, a mountain of gold, it would have been Jabalu Dhahab. But it doesn't say that. For those of you that know Arabic, notice, Kanz Min Dhahab, okay, a, over in this hadith. But in another hadith, where the, mount, the word mountain is used, okay, uh, let me show you, Yushaku Furat, Yaksifat, Whoever is there at that time, the Prophet, whoever is there at that time, don't take from that gold. That gold, is the Prophet is saying, is basically haram. Because the Prophet is saying, meaning it may not come to the stage of haram. That's something for the fuqaha to, to understand what would be the hukam of the gold that is found here, right? Because generally, you know, especially by the Hanafi fiqh, it would, this hadith would be questionable because if gold is allowed, then why is, why can, how can we accept a hadith that doesn't make gold allowed, right? And if gold is allowed, it will always be allowed. So what is the Prophet talking about here, okay? The Prophet wasallam said in another hadith, right? Uh, Again, there will be a treasure of gold. Okay, treasure not of gold, kan mina zahab. And so this has to be looked at very carefully because it doesn't say kanzul zahab, it doesn't say uh, jabalu zahab, it says an and min in the different traditions of the Prophet. Okay, for example, I'll give you another tradition. The Prophet said, uh, so there will be this first hadith is the same one, yushaku furat an yaksifa an kanz mina zahab. Whoever is there at that time, don't take from that oil. Don't take from that gold, sorry. Okay? The Prophet said, Sallallahu The hour will not happen. Hatta, until, same as that ayah, Hatta, Hatta, Al-Furat, Al-Jabal. A mountain uh, over Furat, or a mountain uh, concerning Furat, or a mountain. So this, this An is very interesting because it doesn't say, uh, it doesn't say it the normal way you would say a mountain of gold. Jabal uh, al a mountain of gold. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say a mountain of gold. It says an jabal min dhahab. Okay, and that could have plenty of meanings which I'll go into a little later in another lecture. Okay. Yaqtul nas alayhi fayaqtul min kulli mi'a tis'a wa tis'una wa yaqulu kullu rajul la'alli ana akunu ana alladhi anju. Okay, I think it is anju. Uh, every man will think when this happens, right? Every person, every group of people will think that maybe we'll get this. And another hadith says this will be a group of Muslims fighting with each other. Um, what I did want to talk a little bit about, but maybe I will not, was what about the other forms of energy? One of the brothers asked this question. 
I'm going to go over this quickly, and I'm just going to make blanket statements right now. I'm not going to go into detail, but just showing that this is something that has to be looked to and understood very quickly, okay? Oil production and consumption. This is, by the way, another book, okay? And it is called Out of Gas, okay? And so the, some of the takeaways from this book is oil production and consumption will soon be, begin uh, begin in inevitable de decline. Once declining production causes consumption to begin to drop, economic disruption will follow. So, economic, so the gas disruption and economic disruption are interconnected. Okay, a, a major oil discovery, like people are saying that you find shale here and say, okay, it doesn't, what happens? A major oil discovery, meaning as big as Saudi Arabia is, okay? Because the thing about Saudi Arabia is, Saudi Arabia has a lot of different different types and different different qualities of oil and petroleum that other countries don't have. Shale doesn't give you good petroleum, okay? Uh, a major oil discovery would delay the shortage only by one or two years at most. Without alternative fuel sources, modern civilization could end in this century. 31, uh, and then it goes into the different types of, uh, like the uh, nuclear, solar, wind, and so on and so forth. But the thing is, we have to also, and I'm going to talk about this one day, that the oil companies themselves are buying up all these other uh, energy companies and then stifling and stagnating their progress, okay? And, and, and so this is going to be, you know, the, the issue is once the oil starts to decline, then wars will, I mean, the oil's already started to decline, but once it becomes more and more at a cautionary and a critical point, you'll see more wars. And so I'll end here today. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas.